Oh, well, he's very popular, Ed. The sportos, the motorheads, geeks, sluts, bloods, wasteoids, dweebies, dickheads. They all adore him. They think he's a righteous dude. That is why I have got to catch him this time. To show these kids that the example he sets is a first-class ticket to nowhere. Oh, Ed, you sounded like Dirty Harry just then. Really? Uh-huh. All right, we are live. Um, welcome, Mark Sargent, uh, to my show. Not many people view here, but um, I'm hoping it's just one of those search results where people want to uh, see your name pop up with an interview. And one of the great things about you is you pretty much go anywhere for an interview, whether it's the lion's <laughs> den with like ABC, Net Geo, um, yeah. or people like me where I may get like two views or something like that. I mean, I think you'll get a few more on this. And thank you for having me in advance. And it is true. I have done everything from junior high newspapers to major networks. I rarely will I say no to somebody. They've got to be some pretty awful people if I say no to them. <laughs> and uh, I have. There's been there's been a two, there's like two two troll channels, which I've said no to. Believe it or not. Has there ever been a time where they invited you on? They didn't appear like trolls. And then when you actually got on, they were just. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That'll happen. Yeah, no question. In fact, I kind of roll the dice. I don't, most of the time, I don't do that much research on anybody that I'm I'm doing an interview with mm -hmm. just to kind of see what happens yeah. when, when I walk in. And yeah, oh, sometimes I'll walk into a buzzsaw. Um, the worst one ever was a radio station that was owned by Eminem, you know, the, the rapper. Eminem owns a radio station? He, he owns several. Okay. And uh, this one's called Shady 45. <laughs> and I know, go figure, right? Yeah. And I go on and it was an urban station and they just brought me on and, oh, wow. And they weren't even, it wasn't even really a call-in show. And they opened up the phone lines like 10 minutes in. Yep. Oh, they came at me like I was the devil himself. It was, <laughs> it, and the producer was so happy that I stayed with it. But I honestly, I can't get mad at people that, that yell and scream because look, I, I was you four years ago. Yeah, it's um, it's pretty recent my journey, and in this flat Earth, I think it's the culmination of everything. And when I'm watching your flat Earth clues, your your playlist, I was watching, I watched the whole thing, and you mentioned it first. You don't start off with, "I'm a flat Earther," you know, "I believe in flat Earth." No, um, and it's the last thing that you'll look into in the conspiracy theory rabbit holes and whatnot. Also true. Yep. And also true. When you get to it, people get so angry. Yeah. That you're each, you're actually just mentioning it or entertaining the thought. All of that is true, <laughs> because out of because <clears throat> of, out of all the conspiracies that are out there, this is the only one that was put in your head when you were six years old. You know, when you were in kindergarten or first grade, and the globe was in your classroom. We don't teach first graders about JFK or nine eleven or Boston bombing. Or you just take your take your pick. Flat Earth is one of those things where literally. We put the globe right there in your classroom. Say, oh, yeah, don't, don't, that's what you believe in. That's, that is where you live. Flat Earth, no, terrible. And so everybody ignores it for most of their lives until very, very recently. And uh, probably one of the things that turned me off is I did a Google search result. And now it's, we know Google uh, messes around with the search results. Yeah. And uh, one of the top ones that I come across is Flat Earth Society. Um, and right. some of the people who are flat earth researchers, um, they say that that's like controlled opposition. Do you know if that's true or what well, your thoughts on? I can tell you what I saw because I was one of the first people to talk about it in the flat earth clues. In fact, I covered it in my introduction because when I was looking into flat earth in 2014, I didn't have a lot of places to go. And so I thought, well, heck, flat earth societies obviously know something. So I joined, uh, that particular flat earth society and, while I was waiting for my membership card, I would like try to browse around the forums. And I noticed there were dedicated trolls at this really small society, at the, literally like, you know, at the velvet ropes, just telling people as soon as they came in, there's nothing to see here. It's a joke. They're not serious. Go away. It's not serious. Go away. And the, the society wasn't fighting them. And I was going, wow. So I didn't know which was worse. Do I consider them full-blown government-controlled opposition? I don't know. I mean, I can't prove it. But at the very least, they're apathetic. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. to, I mean, look, Flat Earth, if, if they're Flat Earth 1.0, then what we've done in social media is Flat Earth 2.0. And we've run so far out in front of them that when they finally contacted me, I don't know, had to have been like 18 months after I started doing the Flat Earth Clues, mm-hmm. they called me on the phone and I, I said, look, and they said, oh, yeah, we support what you're doing, blah, blah, blah. I was going, look, no offense, but where have you guys been? <laughs> I, go, I go, do you realize how, you know, we've got a conference coming up. You know, we've got we got channels with, you know, with six figure uh, subscribers in there. You know, what what are you guys doing? And they, you know, just there just didn't seem to be much enthusiasm on the Flatter Society side. So I just look, no offense, we don't need you. And so are they controlled opposition? <sighs> Maybe. Maybe they are. Again, you're not going to be able to prove it, mm-hmm. but at the same time, they have not helped us yeah. in the slightest. In fact, uh, the, the conferences that I have done in Raleigh and uh, Edmonds in Canada and Denver, Colorado, uh, and then all the meetups, I have never run into a single person that actually ha- was part of that society. I, In fact, I'm one of the only people, a card-carrying member, that still, you know, I've still got my card in my wallet, which I show people from time to time. I showed Rob Skiba at Denver this year. And I said, oh, yeah, by the way, you know, because he asked, he goes, did you actually join? I go, yeah, I joined <laughs> back in, tw- why wouldn't I in 2014? There weren't that many people doing it. There was Matt Boylan, Cesar, Jay Henning Caligia, Math Powerland, and me. Uh, so uh, I had to turn to somebody and then quickly I disavowed any relationship with them. So hopefully that answers that. Yeah. Um. So, uh, getting to this point, at least for me and you too, I, I think mm-hmm. anyone who goes into the flat earth theory is, um, reasons not to trust the globe earth theory. And right. one of the big proponents is that is I don't really trust NASA. I look at their videos. I look at their photography. I just, the money that they get, the budget, um, their secrecy. Um, for example, they won't release, um, just the data of the radiation levels of the Van Allen belt. Why wouldn't right. you release that stuff? Right. And if you look through a lot of people who really just focus on, on the videos of NASA, they're not in space floating. They're just, they have harnesses, they have uh, lines, they're using right. different types of technology for their live streams. Nothing's, nothing works a hundred percent. I mean, people are just investigating them like crazy. Um, right. So what are the biggest, um, Reasons not to trust the globe earth theory from from your point of view. Uh yeah. Well, to to lean on let's let's be, let's lean on NASA a little more since you brought it up. Uh, NASA because people say people will they'll they'll make a stretch when I get interviewed. They'll say, "Are you saying that the the moon missions were faked? That the Apollo program was faked by the Americans?" I go, "No, no, no. It's much worse than that." <laughs> <laughs> what I'm saying is, is the only reason NASA was even created in its entirety was to keep this thing under wraps, a little bit of a play on words there, mm-hmm. uh, meaning the Apollo program is a, a, an utter lie from minute one. Uh, and to, to be fair, NASA and the United States did what they could at the time in the late 60s with the technology that they had. Yeah. You know, remember, there was no CGI. Star Wars was still 10 years away. Uh, and that was the early, early stuff. Uh, and, you know, nobody had com- nobody even knew what computers were back in the 60s. And they so the moves they made were good for the time, but they did not hold up well as the years progressed. A uh, perfect example would be removing all the stars, you know, when, when you're on the moon. There, there's no stars. The, no, no stars can be seen. And they did that for a very, very obvious reason, which is what if we get the constellations wrong? Because we're date, we're date and time stamping everything. So what happens if the stars are out of place? What if Orion's belt should be here, but it's actually over there? Mm-hmm. Well, some nerd's going to figure that out in Nebraska and is, is underwear at three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> that's, all, that's it. It's all it takes. Because mm-hmm. remember, we've got people that literally dedicate their lives to finding movie mistakes. You know, moviemistakes.com mm-hmm. and all the clones out there. If you move, if a coffee cup moves from here to here in a movie without somebody moving it, right, it, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be noted. It's like, oh, yeah, movie production mistakes. And the reason why there are production mistakes in movies, just to backtrack a little, is that... Uh, movies are shot out of sequence to save money. 
So you shoot all the house se- shots here, and then you shoot all the desert sequences and all the city sequences. But the thing is, if you have to go back and do reshoots and touch-ups, you have to rebuild the set from scratch if you've already torn it down. You never get it completely right. It's all there's always a few things missing here and there. You know, you take pictures and you try to do the best you can, but it, it's usually the lowest common denominator, the, the, the weakest link of the chain. Same thing applies to NASA. And that was they weren't getting nearly as much money back in the day and adjusted dollars. I mean, yeah, I mean, they had to create the, the, the fake rocket technology. And it comes down to this. Uh, uh, yes, they so desperately wanted in the late 50s and early 60s to hand a picture of Earth. Remember, there were no pictures of Earth mm-hmm. back then. Even all the way up until 1972, there was no picture of Earth, not full disc in sunlight called the Blue Marble Shot. And you guys can look this up. Uh, so, but the thing is, you can't just hand people the picture. I mean, they, they would have loved to have done it. 1959, love to have handed you the picture. Unfortunately, you would have said, oh, it's a really great pick. How'd you take it? So they had to create, it's the most expensive fake pick of all time. You had to create the illusion that you had to make real rockets that could go, that supposedly could carry people up to a certain height. So you would at least say, oh yeah, it was that rocket that left the pad that shot that pick. And even then they dragged their feet. Oh my Lord. Uh, get a member. Uh, NASA was founded in 1958, right? Mm-hmm. 58, all the way through the 60s, they never took a pick. And then only during Apollo 17, during the last on the way home, it's like, oh, yeah, we might as well take that blue marble shot. That's where the blue marble, the famous blue marble shot is 1972. What happened those 14 years? You know, what what, what happened? It's like they they didn't bother to take a pick. And then here's the, the kicker. They milked that pick from 1972 all the way until the summer of 2015. 43 years. One pick. And I and I couldn't see. Sorry, I'm rambling. This is what I do. No, no, that's good. Um, I uh, I couldn't even see the forest for the trees in 2000 when I was running a tech support department in Boulder, Colorado. When I said back in 2000, the internet was up and running, right? Mm-hmm. And I said, oh, you know what? I I want to get different Earth picks for the tech the tech team. I want to put those the backdrops, right? I want to set it up, you know, in advance. And I remember on a weekend, I was going in, I was doing Boolean strings. I was going to Earth from space, picture of Earth from space, some, all, every combination. And I only saw one pick, and that was the Apollo 17 blue marble shot. Just rows and rows and rows and rows of the exact same pick. Only different resolutions, slightly different tinting. But you could tell it was the exact same pick. And I'm going, NASA, you suck. You're terrible <laughs> at this. Your, your internet presence is awful. Get a new pitch. And I gave up on the idea. It didn't even occur to me what was going on and only a few years later when uh um oh crap what was his name uh simmons from nasa when he made the first iphone backdrop which is a blue marble shot he was the guy that came on and said oh yeah i had to create it from scratch because there were no pics of the earth i could use so i had to create a brand new blue marble shot and it's not even considered official it's literally photoshop from 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 but from A to Z, it's absolutely layered Photoshop to where he even um, used, he got lazy at the end. Again, comes down to the lowest denominator. It's like, what? Because it was a Friday and you had, you had like happy hour to go to. He was using the cloning tool in the Southern Hemisphere and just clone the hell out of the, out of the clouds in the Southern Hemisphere. And that's what, he, that's what he gave. Let me end on this point, which is what was interesting about that was that NASA ended up taking that blue marble shot and circulating it all over the place when he made it as the real deal. And I know this for an absolute fact, because I went down to the freaking Space Center in Houston uh, with Patricia Steer uh, just last year. And when we were in, one of their big uh, highlight things is they've got a jumbo jet with a space shuttle on top of it. You know, everything's cleared out, but they've got that pic sitting in there with some captions next to him. It's going, you're using the iPhone photo from from (laughs) the the very first iPhone. You're using that in your NASA display. You're actually displaying that as the real thing. Yeah, they got nothing. I mean, just plenty of things I don't like about NASA. Even if it were true that they went to the moon, I mean, they got thousands of pictures that they took. They don't have the original photos; those no. were destroyed. No. Uh, they and, don't. And I could, I can destroy. Sorry to cut you off. I okay. could destroy the NASA thing in uh, three sentences. But the first one has got. We'll do it real quick. Ready? Intersecting shadows. Can't exist because as physics will tell you shadows can only go in one direction if there's only one light source, uh, unless that light source is super, super close, like a spotlight that's only about, uh, you know, 100 yards away. 
Uh, two would be the Blast Crater, which isn't there. Uh, and three, which I used to used to be feats of strength for me because you know it's one sixth Earth's gravity, and yet there's no feats of strength. Um, would be the television transmission, and that is we can't even get a tell. If you used a, a VHF television transmitter right now, you might be able with the battery power that they had available to them, you might be able to broadcast 50, 60 miles, maybe now today in 2018 mm -hmm. in 1969 with the limited battery technology that they had you're telling me not only did they broadcast pinpoint accuracy at a quarter of a million miles from the moon but they were doing 30 frames a second <laughs> really you were doing this with no snow no distortion and you're hitting that thing perfectly with that stupid little dish that they had no no yeah. no 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 i mean Rocket fuel, they don't have the the, uh, the makeup for. They don't have the telemetry right. data that was destroyed. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it just, everything just seems to stink. It's like the mankind's greatest hour, I would say. I mean, if you talk to anybody, what's what's mankind's greatest accomplishment? It would say right. landing on the moon. Had to have been the moon mission. Yeah. And there's yeah. just... And and, and the moon mission, uh, which I covered in my very first clue, and it just came to fruition this year, which was the entire, you know, from the 60s up until this year, there was literally no movie made about the moon missions, ever, yeah. ever. There was two movies made ever, one in the 80s called The Right Stuff, which mm -hmm. was about uh, the astronaut recruiting program, and then Apollo 13, which never landed on the moon. Very yeah. convenient. Let's shoot the whole thing in the capsule. And only this year, because remember, the 50th anniversary is coming up uh, in just a few months. And only now did they do First Man with the life of Neil Armstrong. There, there's one more movie. It's uh, It had Clint Eastwood in it. it um, oh, Space Cowboys? Space Cowboys. Uh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> All right. I, a factual thing, not space space guy. If you're gonna do that, you might as well use um, Apollo 18, which was about little rock monsters that would hide <laughs> on the moon and eat astronauts. They're gonna do that. <coughs> so okay. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Sorry about that. I've been sorry. having a cough. So now reasons to now just because we're ha harping on NASA and and the moon landings may may have been hoaxed, but right. does that prove a flat Earth? Uh, um, so the flat Earth theory. What's what's reasons to trust? Um, do, do, does it prove the? Does it prove uh, a flat Earth? No, of course not. Uh, in fact, most of the stuff in the flat Earth realm, you know, the flat Earth community doesn't prove flat Earth. But what it does, can, and, and people will say, you know, do I get emails all the time? Can you prove flat Earth? I go, no. In a court of law, no, I couldn't prove flat Earth. But here's the thing: I can create so much reasonable doubt in the globe that by the time I'm done, you have nowhere else to turn but flat earth. Meaning you got, you got, there's nothing to hang on to in the globe by the time you're done with any flat earth mantra. I mean, there's so many cool points that, that is like, where else are you going to go? You've got to go back to some sort of, and just, just to, to be clear here, when I talk about flat earth, because people are going to say, what, what flat earth are you talking about? I'm saying that you're living in, um, it's not just flat, you're living in a structure. You're living in a terrarium, a planetarium, a snow globe, a Hollywood backlot with walls and a floor and a ceiling. You're living in a big box. And, a bo and this structure is so large that even our best and brightest couldn't figure it out uh, until about 1960. Meaning for thousands of years, our best people could not figure it out. And when they figured it out, they're like, yeah, we're going to. We're going to lock this thing down for we're not going to you know why tell anybody the the shock waves that would go through the system could potentially disrupt a, a great deal and so they decided to keep it a secret um so when i was now the now flat earth kind of coincides with a lot of biblical stories ancient mm -hmm. history yep. and 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 it kind of it kind of comes back around but um as far as the modern era it kind of begins with Admiral Byrd and right. his uh, explorations into Antarctica. Right. And some people don't trust Admiral Byrd and what he says, especially when, you know, you see the interviews that he did live because right. he was a Freemason. What are sure. your thoughts on? Um, I mean, yeah, he was a Freemason and lots of men in power are Freemasons. Does that mean that Freemasons lie all the time about everything? No. Uh, does it mean that they use that information to their advantage? Yes. However, yet I remember, not only was it Freemason, but he was also an admiral in the United States Navy. 
So he is beholden to the Navy first. And I mean, you know, look, he's not going to lie on his missions all the time, especially when he, if he was going out there by himself, sure. But he's not. He was, he was going down there with big contingencies of men. As a matter of fact, Operation High Jump, he commanded a full-blown carrier fleet with 5,000 men and support ships. And that was an amazing mission, which we still don't know really much about other than we think he was trying to root out the last, last of the Nazis who, was, who were actually down there during World War II. Um, but Admiral Byrd is an interesting, interesting character in that he, uh, you know, he's mostly known for the Hollow Earth theory from the 1926 mission where he flew his plane to the North Pole. He was the first man to fly to the North Pole. Supposedly it turned into like a journey to the center of the earth thing. You would have thought there would have been some follow-up on that, but no. The United States Navy decides instead to send him to Antarctica from 1928 up until his death in 1957. And that was the other thing. You know, the, you can say what you want about him being a Mason, but he did die suddenly uh, from a heart attack at, in his home. And I think that's because in press conferences, he was just way too friendly with the press. I mean, you could even see during that wonderful interview he did for uh, CBS for the Long Jeans Chronoscope, where he was he was giving away stuff, where he was saying that, uh, he was saying, oh yeah, by the way, you know, there's uranium down there, probably shouldn't talk about that. You know, the Russians are down there. I'm a little nervous about that. He was giving away a lot of trade secrets. So, uh, you know, was he a Mason? Yeah, of course he was. Uh, lots of guys are, uh, but I still believe in the missions and I still believe in what the military was releasing up until the blackout in, uh, 1958, 1959. Now, um, the thing about Admiral Byrd, um, he states that there's a continent that's, hasn't been explored. Right. And, um, I looked, we, so we have pictures, supposed to pictures of, of, of the moon and Mars, Yep. But South Pole, we don't really have pictures of South Pole, um, or they could t they could take any picture anywhere and say this is the South Pole, right? And so the the Antarctic Treaty is bulletproof, and it is one of those cool things that has been hidden from everybody for a long time. And that is, uh, after NASA was formed in 1958, a weird thing happened in 1959. And again, the coincidences I don't believe in them. And that is, two things happened. One. The Van Allen radiation belts were announced in 1959 by NASA employee Van Allen, which basically sealed off the upper edge. He said, oh, yeah, it's super deadly up there. No one should ever go through that, which, of course, puts the entire Apollo missions into question. And then the other thing that happened in 1959 was the Antarctic Treaty was ratified by, I think, about a dozen nations at the time. And it said that no matter what country you live in, your corporations can't go down there ever. And it's to date, it's the only treaty that remains unbroken. It's not even up for debate until 2041. And it, and it's, you got to remember, it, 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 this is not a small deal. Uh, there were countries back then that needed those resources. You know, the coal, the minerals, the uranium, the oil, they needed these things. And everybody agreed. Nobody even protested. And what, what I mean by that is, even if let's say you're the head of uh, a major oil company like British Petroleum, right? Mm -hmm. Not only are you not allowed to go down there, you're not even allowed to talk about it. That's the weird part. Where it's like you'd think people would run full page ads, you know, and, and protest and lobby and grease palms. Politicians look greed and money and power. They rule everything. We know this. Capitalism. Yeah, go team. That doesn't apply down there. Uh, it is absolutely locked down tighter than a drum. Yes, you can you want to spend ten, twelve thousand dollars and to have your picture taken with penguins on the peninsula, fine. And you can have a guided tour to the South Pole. What do they claim to be the South Pole? Other than that, though, the rest of it's off limits, and it is an interesting, interesting place. Uh, so the flat Earth theory has the what will we so the Earth uh, surrounded by ice. Right. So, <clears throat> are there poles with um, the flat Earth theory, and is there an axis? I mean, there's um, there's no the, the flat Earth theory says there's no spin. We're not moving in space and I mean, no, no, no. Okay, so the flat earth theory, let, let's give it the, the quick breakdown. Mm -hmm. You are living, again, in a building with walls and a floor and a ceiling. This building is not moving. This building may have uh, may have a circular lake on the inside of it. Basically, that's what we're talking about, a giant saltwater lake. People say, why doesn't the water fall off? I go, why doesn't the water fall off on a lake? 
It's because you have edges. You know, the Antarctic coastline is the beginning of that edge, and then it probably goes out thousands of miles. Because again, Admiral Byrd was looking for it from 1928 up until about 1956. And that's when they, it took him that long, he was flying his own planes to figure out where the outer walls were. So it has to be thousands of miles inland. Um, when it comes to the poles, actually it doesn't work that much different than the globe model, meaning the center of this building would be the North Pole. And that is the dominant pole where every, you know, the compasses work just fine. In fact, if you did circumnavigated this building from the inside, did a big circle around it, like a, like a lap around a, a track at a high school, the compass would work fine because the compass is still going to point towards the center, which is north. The South Pole, however, is a completely different animal. And that is, I've had different, including um, Australian military guys that says, you know, eventually what should happen is when you get to, to the Southern Hemisphere, the dominant force, you know, the North Pole should switch over and the South Pole should become dominant eventually, right? That's that's mm -hmm. how it works, right? Half and half. He goes, it never happens. He goes, there is no true South Pole. Yeah, there may be a weak magnetic force out there. He goes, but it doesn't do anything compared to the North Pole. In fact, we cannot find a dominant magnetic South Pole. So I thought that was very, very interesting. Now, I think uh, if I had uh, the means to do it, you go to uh, four directions from the North Pole, uh, east, south, west, um, actually in just wh whichever directions you can go and just keep going the opposite direction of north and see where those different directions end up. That be Tricky, tricky to do, though, because remember, in a flat model, there is no north, south, east or west. Yeah, there's only there's only the center at which we, of course, instinctively call the north. Mm -hmm. And then the rest of it, I know we're, we, we're dying to put a north, south, east, or west on this thing, but okay, where is, where is it exactly? So you, in fact, you have to come up with a whole new, oh, wow, I don't even know how you'd do it exactly. You'd have to make up a new, you'd have to call the center the center, and then the north wouldn't be magnetic north anymore. It would just be north, south, east, and west. So that's, yeah. that's how you would do it. But you would have to ignore, if you were going to try to do what you do yeah. and make it to those points, mm -hmm. you would have to ignore the compass eventually. You would have to fly, oh man, you would have to fly opposite from the compass yep. in four different directions. You basically couldn't even start navigating from it unless you were at the center. That's how you would start. And then, yes. So everyone have to, would have to start at the North Pole. And go yeah, you'd have to start at that center directions. point and then hope to God it was magnetic north somewhere <laughs> in the center there and, <clears> and <throat> make it. And you'd have to also bypass GPS because remember GPS, not to use a line for the matrix, works for the system. Because the GPS is a DOD system that the United States came up with in the mid '90s, and that's what we've relied on ever since. And the D and the GPS, sorry, when it gets to a certain point, is a lie. And yeah, you want to go from from here, 300 miles away, to visit your friend in another state. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, but when you get away from any landmass, approximately 150, 200 miles, the GPS system stops working. Uh, oh, yeah, you'll you'll see your little icon there. You, you know, you're not blinked away, but your latitude and longitude go into question marks. They uh, they say a, a estimated or approximated, which basically just means we have no idea where you are. Just keep flying in that direction. We'll pick you up eventually. And that's what everyone does. They just go, it's like, well, okay, we're on that heading. We'll stay on that heading. And then the GPS picks back up once they get within land radar range. So the question is, if it's 32 overlapping blanket coverage satellites, there should be no dead spots. There's dead spots, not just in the Southern Hemisphere either. There's dead spots if you want to go to Hawaii from um, San Francisco or Los Angeles. Once you hit, you know, because there's no islands between here and Hawaii. Once you're heading out that way, blink, it's gone. Latitude and longitude are, are gone. Uh, one of the thoughts that I had <clears throat> with, because um, I saw your video on um if, if you're if you live in the southern hemisphere try to find any route to any other place in one right. non-stop flight and um that's i haven't been able to do that yet but when they it, are out there there are. there are a few okay. but they are so i mean i wouldn't have made the video if i wouldn't have run into the same thing you would have, mm -hmm. which is i mean yeah what we're talking about here is anywhere from uh africa or south america or australia to anywhere else you know in the southern hemisphere and it was what was staggering to me was at least 95% of the flights were connections in the Southern Hemisphere. Bad connections. I mean, most of them going way out of their way 
to 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 go up north for what? It, and it, don't tell me they're picking up people. No, it's it's because they have no choice. It's the the map is an utter lie. And so then a couple of people said, oh, you know, there's a couple of flights here and there. I mean, just a handful. I'm going mm-hmm. so and and that part bugged me. And then I started looking at those closely. I was following those flights, and that's when I first saw the latitude and longitude disappear. I was like, oh yeah. I mean, there's a lot of people uh, that could say, you know, just they're just not populated enough. You know, not a lot, a lot of people would go and fly at this point of this country. But I was thinking, all right, all we have to do is look at the code, the software for, right. for the flight trajectories, right? right. Because right. if they were going to point A to point B and it was actually a flat Earth, they would have to change the 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 calculations within the software. Otherwise, pilots would have to do that on their own and know which points. But, but then there'd also be that secrecy. It's, it's like pilots pilots p- humans are prone to talk they're prone to well they they are but at the same time we are we take a lot of things for granted you know we we bel- we take a lot of things at face value including pilots in fact uh, the pilots that I've talked to and I've got a ma- you know big subject matter list of, of you know military people and pilots and engineers you know that all say the same thing especially pilots they say oh yeah we know we see a flat horizon when we're flying you know, we get above the clouds and it's always flat, right? No matter no matter what altitude, once you get above the, the clouds, it's, you know, the, the horizon rises to your eye level. He goes, but we know it's a globe because we're told it's a globe. And I go, so why don't you say anything? And he goes, he goes, what are you kidding? <laughs> he goes, he goes, one, pilots, you know, their, their main goal in life, because it's, it's still a tricky business. You know, there's a lot of autopilot, but you, your main goal is to get from point A to point B without crashing. Mm-hmm. That's that's your main goal. He goes, and there's so many little things you have to do along the way that by the time you're done, it's just rinse and repeat. And you don't, it's like, well, whatever. And plus, even if you did, even if you did believe the, the maps were wrong and the earth was, the, the shape of the earth was wrong. Who exactly are you going to go to? Who are you going to go to first? I mean, seriously, you're going to go to um, the company you're working for? You're going to go to Delta or United or KLM? Um, <clears throat> or are you going to um, uh, go to uh, the FAA? No. You tell anybody you're benched. Yeah. That's it. I mean, I wasn't kidding when I said in the clues. Look, their pilots are benched even if they officially talk to the press and say they saw a UFO. Right. It, 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 and that's happened multiple times over the years. You know, pilots will get benched for that. If you go on and say, I mean, seriously, come on, between you and me, mm-hmm. are you going to get on a plane with a flat earth pilot, a <laughs> pilot that actually believes in flat earth? There's a lot of people that'd be like, yeah, no, no, I'm yeah. not going to do it. Yeah. Not gonna happen, so. it, it would be bad for uh, logistics for for the airline. Plus, you yeah. can't talk to the government. Government would would know about it. You can't talk to the, the mainstream corporate media. Uh, right. Which I want to talk to you about because you did a couple of interviews uh, with one that I saw, which is banned in the U.S. in YouTube, is the one with Nat Geo. Nat Geo, yep. And um, at every corner, they want to put flat Earth theorists in a bad light. <clears throat> I mean, they, well, that I mean, that one in particular, <clears throat> they were coming after us. I mean, come on, it's Nat Geo. Yeah, <laughs> it's got Geo in the title. Yeah, which which is you know. It, that there's your earth right there and and i knew that going in uh in fact i didn't want to do that interview they paid for it was an all expenses paid trip for me to go to los angeles because uh, in fact they contacted me when i was at a film festival in toronto and they said hey we we want to do a thing in los angeles uh you know can you organize a meetup down there and do go to this experiment at the salton sea which wasn't ours, you know, it was a debunking experiment. I go, no, I go, there's plenty of people in LA, contact them, I don't wanna do it. And then they called me back, said, come on, we'll pay. It's like, oh, fine, fine, I'll do it. So I went, I go out there and I shoot with them for three days. What you saw, cause I think I sent you the, the, yep. the, the links to them. The what you saw was what was left after they chopped that thing to hell. Uh, I mean, people, people were giving me grief. They're saying, why didn't you, you know, come after you know why didn't you do more rebuttals against you know the the debunkers i go i did for hours hours on end i mean i get to where my voice was was shot where i was just yelling on the beach i was going look this is wrong this is wrong this is wrong we don't do this experiment here here's all the experiments we have done we, i listed everything off time and time again and they were having none of it 
they were not going to use it. Now they shot it. It's all on there, but they weren't going to put it on television because remember Nat Geo wants to make scientific um, enthusiasts. They want to make them feel better. So painting us and saying that, oh yeah, flat earthers, you don't have to worry about them. But the thing was, even they couldn't leave out the part where, uh, like here, I'll, I'm sorry to go off in a different direction slightly. They even mentioned, you if you listen to it again, towards the end of the interview, they said more young people are looking into flat earth. One of the reasons they contacted us and had us out there was because of the u.gov survey, which was done at the beginning of, of wow, this year, I think where a British scientific journal contacted 10,000 Americans and said, hey, what do you think about Flat Earth? Because that's what you want to do, right? And everything fell within the curve just nicely, except for the 18 to 24-year-olds. 18 to 24-year-olds, a third of them didn't believe in the globe anymore. A third. It was a lot. Yeah. You know, like 30, 34%. That's a, it's way outside the norm. And this freaked them out. I freaked out scientists to where even scientists are trying to make themselves better. Like they're attacking their own people, attacking the survey group saying, yeah, you, you did that wrong. You, you did. It's like, what are you talking about? We do this for a living. This is what we do. You never complained before. Yeah, you totally did it wrong. And yeah, so that's why they were out there. And yet, so they had to slip that in, meaning uh, National Geographic, when they got to the end, you could hear the tones they were putting out there saying, saying, look, you could be leading people into the dark ages. You could be, this could, what happens to medicine? What happens to science? What happens to civilization? And I'm, I've never gotten those questions before in my life. I'm going, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I, I go, we haven't burned down any libraries. So I think that's fine. You know, I think we're, I think things are progressing nicely. But if you're going to paint it doom and gloom, they were worried that science wasn't putting up a defense. So there you go. All right. Two things before I want to, Go circle back into the Nat Geo documentary, but yeah. <clears throat> one Nat Geo was bought off a long time ago. I'm not sure how many years ago by Matt, uh, no, uh, Murdoch, um, the oh, British sure. guy, Ru Rupert. Rupert Murdoch, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um, who owns Fox News and, and a whole bunch of a lot stuff. of stuff, yep. yeah. Um, I wasn't too happy about that when I heard that. Um, then there's uh, the recent celebrities that are just state. Do you, do you think the earth is is a globe and uh the latest one was stefan curry saying yep um no <laughs> and well, it was just a, like a small little blurb and it he, got blew blow it up and he oh, had to apologize well, and they got to him pretty quick yeah uh so what had happened was he goes on a podcast and he didn't go after flat earth he didn't do what kyrie irving did okay he said that he didn't believe in the moon missions it wasn't even close he was like nope no nope, didn't go to the moon right well, that's different. Flat Earth is fairly generic compared to, even though we don't believe in, believe in the moon missions, we don't. that's not our opening line. Mm -hmm. uh, and so what had happened was, but if you say, I don't believe in the moon missions, and you're in the United States, eh, sorry, that's a little anti-patriotic for a bunch of people. Because, you know, the moon missions is Apollo, wave the flag, go team, right? Rah, rah. Well, there was the, he, they got to him quick. I mean, to where that he, he just posted a thing yesterday where not only did uh, 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 Scott Kelly, the astronaut, contact him through, through Instagram or something like that, yep. but apparently Obama called him. Wow. And it's like, okay, all right. And, and so now, now he has backpedaled and said that he doesn't believe in any conspiracies at all. He, he, he <laughs> believes in the moon. He believes in vaccines. He believes in 9-11 was exactly what we said. He believes in everything. And I'm going, oh, okay, all right, I got it. So, I mean, it was probably just the sponsors like it was with Shaquille O'Neal. Shaquille held out for 10 days. Mm -hmm. And then I'm sure his agent called him and said, uh, yeah, just so you know, you might lose this company. And whatever that company is, you know, is probably paying them two, three million a year in endorsements. And sorry, it's a that's a chunk of change for anybody. You know, you're gonna you're gonna unless you're a diehard flat earth fan, you're gonna you're gonna give up that for you know they, these people have a lot to lose. Yeah. And so Stephen Curry, yeah, he backpedaled, and I'm I'm sad about that. But honestly, if Obama calls you, yeah, it's not a good sign. And but it's but it's flattering for us. I mean, it's, seriously, he all of a sudden gets on the horn. With him, I mean, I don't know what, what was said, but, you know, maybe he was just giving him advice like, yeah, man, don't do this. You know, maybe for, well, maybe for different reasons, maybe for, for cultural reasons. 
It's like, don't do this to us. You're making great, great progress. Don't do this. Well, it's funny because a lot of people who view my show, I used to do a lot of politics before, and especially with, um, what's his name? Uh, Bernie Sanders. Oh, yeah. And he was going to be like, I'm fighting all the way to the uh, National Convention, Democrat National Convention. Then he talks with President Obama. He comes out, Hillary Clinton's the nominee. <laughs> right. Totally changed. So whoever talks with Obama, <laughs> they're going to just, they're out. I don't know what it is with Obama, but. <laughs> yeah, again, well, I mean, it would be that what other president can call, seriously, could call him. Uh, I mean, it's got to be a Democrat, you know, because most of your sports guys are on the, on the Democratic side. So mm -hmm. it's not going to be uh, George Bush or. Uh, like Jimmy, what Jimmy Carter could call up Stephen Curry, and Stephen Curry would be like, uh, "Who are you?" <laughs> yeah, you want to know who Jimmy what? Carter is? Yeah. Oh, you were president. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, he was. Oh, um, I want to go somewhere else, um, but anyways, we'll go back to Nat Geo. So the experiment okay. that they did it yep. was an experiment you'll see all over YouTube, and YouTube. A lot of YouTubers they'll buy. The greatest camera out there the latest one is the nikon p 900 one, or something. one thousand one thousand now, now yeah. yeah so it's crazy zoom so what they do is they'll just zoom in on, on the horizon they'll just put an object out there and they'll just keep zooming in and there's right. no curvature and there's curvature calculations i think the calculation is for every thought every um mile the curvature is eight inches well, it's eight inches per mile squared, squared, okay. which usually intimidates people because everyone forgets their high school algebra. Mm -hmm. And that is, it's eight inches times every mile times itself. So if it's three miles, it's three times three, which is nine times eight is 72. 10 miles would be 10 times 10 is 100 times eight is 800 inches mm -hmm. and so on. It gets, and it's got to get steeper and steeper because remember, if it's a globe, eventually it's got to go completely vertical. Yep. You know, it's got to, it's got to fall off. And so the test that they did was interesting. Again, it worked at some things work in our favor was the raft test. That was their backup test. The test that we spent most of the morning doing was a balloon test that was completely on the other side of the lake at about nine miles and change, where there were some balloons out there that they were going to raise this banner, the same sort of stripes from, mm -hmm. a, from a certain distance. So the problem was at nine, 10 miles, especially since they waited for the sun to come up, they didn't know where the freaking balloons were. People forget that like 10 miles away, you can't, you don't know where anything's out there. Yep. I mean, you're looking with binoculars. You have no idea what, land, you know, unless you have landmarks right next to it. And here was the thing. We were finding it with our P900s. We're saying, yeah, the balloons are right there. No, you can't see them yet. They're it's on the other side of the curve. I'm going, it's like, what are you talking about? They're right there. They're right there. We were spotting the balloons before they were on the beach. Mm -hmm. And apparently that whole series of footage that they shot there was so problematic, they scrapped it. Yeah, There was no, no mention of it at all in National Geographic. So their backup thing <clears throat> was to put this little guy in a raft out about, I don't know, three, four miles into the lake and hold up a thing and then, you know, say, oh, yeah, we're disappearing stripes. Well, the problem was the footage that they showed on that geo, you could see the bottom of the boat. So at the water. So it's like, okay. And all they did was pull back the camera. It's like, look at four miles. You could zoom in. You you could you could um, you could lip read at four miles with a P nine hundred. That's nothing for for a P nine hundred. And they but they said it was the words it was the narrative over the boat. We're saying, oh well, you can obviously see the stripes are gone. Yeah, one and a half stripes. They said one. And yeah, a half. yeah. It's like no, no, not at all. I mean, it was so the, the editing was so quick, and but that's where they went. And then of course because they cut out all my rebuttals. It made it seem like I wasn't fighting it. They went yeah. straight to the, you know, or anyone here want to give up flat earth. They left out all that stuff beforehand. <laughs> yeah, it shows and, you just, uh, so they asked that question. Did it show you just kind of waiting for like two seconds and going, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's they, they edited that. I mean, again, anyone that watches that, it was, yeah, because I would have sat there and done nothing. No, of course not. I was, it was explaining to him. I'm going, look. 18 miles from here are mountains mm -hmm. that we used to see mountains at the very beginning. Now they look like islands because there's so much distortion under it and they're disappearing every half hour. We try the whole point of this experiment was they wanted to shoot these balloons before the sun came up. We were all there at five in the morning. And by the time they did this raft thing, it was oh 10 30. I mean, the, the sun was way, way up and the distortion was beyond ridiculous. And I said, I go, this is why we rarely do these tests during the daytime anymore. We use, we do them at night. We do them in cold weather. We use lasers, uh, you know, and we've done record. Oh my God. They left out the entire argument between me and Jim Underwood. Uh, was that his name? Jim Underwood, I think, or Bob Underwood, whatever his name was. His last name was Underwood where, um, 
where we did the experiment in Europe at Lake Balaton on a frozen lake uh, shooting 40 kilometers with a, with a military-grade laser. And he absolutely would not accept it. I was going, look, Guinness Book of World Records was there with us, right? It, it documented the entire thing. We actually are in the book now. And he goes, unless I'm there, it's not valid. I'm going, I'm sorry, your word means nothing. I'll take Guinness over you any day, you know? And, and, he's, and he's like, no, you got to do it here at this lake. And under my conditions, I was going, oh, yeah, that's never going to happen. So what, 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 what kills me um, is I'm big. I was big into science. But now <laughs> I feel like science has entered a dogmatic stage. Right. I mean, the flat earth people are the ones doing the experiments and retesting, testing, and trying everything. But then yeah. when you get to the scientists... Neil deGrasse Tyson is one of them. It won't, he won't even debate. He'll nope. say, "Here's a picture of NASA. If you don't believe that's that's real, then we've we've got nothing to talk about." I Neil don't deGrasse see that. Tyson said one of the most <clears throat> arrogant things I've heard from anyone since Kanye, which is, "Science is true whether or not you believe in it." And I was going, "Okay, so and and I know what he meant by that. He's like, once we put our stamp of approval on it." It's fact. It's absolutely true. And I go, yeah, here's the thing. If you want to tell me what the boiling temperature of water is at sea level, yeah, sure. That's fine. That's something we can test. Tell me what the core of the earth looks like. No, no, no. And I try to remind, which is why I did a clue on it. I said, look, I go, according to you, I go, the, the core of the earth looks like a, um, a, a red and an orange and a yellow and a white band. Each one's a thousand miles thick. I go, what's the deepest probe you've ever drilled? 2,000 miles? That's halfway. Remember, 4,000 miles has to be the center of the Earth, right? Uh, 1,000 miles? 100 miles? Remember, 1%. 1% is 40 miles. Deepest hole ever drilled is 8 miles. Hmm. That was done by the Germans and the Russians. They tried for years. Could not get past 8 miles. Could not do it. And yet, science tells us, oh yeah, this is what the core of the Earth looks like. And they used to, back in the day, in the old textbooks, in small print, say that, basically in small print, saying, we have no idea what the core of the Earth looks like. But we're, we're just kind of extrapolating, because you won't see science put big question marks inside of anything. They don't like leaving open questions. The, remember, it's science. Mm. And at some point, they decide to pull off the, the small print. And once you do that, it becomes canon. You know, it becomes gospel. It, you know, you have a nine-year-old look at that cross-section of the globe, and then they see it again when they're 18. Oh, yeah, that's absolutely what the core looks. They don't, they, they take it for, they take it on faith. And I know that sounds, I'm using a lot of religious terms here, but that's exactly what it is. Science has become scientism. And that is they have taken their power too far. Yep. Whereas they, they know full well, they say, all we have to do is have men in lab coats with master's degrees or PhD in their field put a stamp on their theory and the public will believe it. And if you have any, have any doubt, look at the guy, sorry, I, I dragged things on, uh, was the guy that was uh, from, um, I think it was Caltech, the guy that was in the Nat Geo thing, right? His specialty is dark matter. That's what his specialty is. He, he you know, that's a theory, not just a theory. That's like one of the fringe theories of space right now is dark mm -hmm. matter. No one can prove it. No one even knows how to quantify it. And that's his thing. And yet he comes out and says, oh, yeah, flatter is this dangerous. That's dangerous to me. That's dangerous to my establishment. It's like, yeah, damn right it is. Yeah. Making up dark matter. Come on. What's what's easier to if, uh, it's easier to swallow flat earth than it is dark matter. So one of the things that um, so my professional, I guess, expertise was in, in uh, quality assurance for software. That was just kind of my thing in tech. I used to do that as well. Yeah. And um, to me, it feels like the globe earth a lot of scientific theories out there you're supposed to just take their word for it is if they give you a software and saying there's no bugs in the software and i'll call bullshit and they go there's bugs in the software it's like no there's no bugs and that's why we don't have a qa team it's the reason why you don't have found any bugs is because you don't have a qa team testing it and therefore right. you're saying it doesn't have any bugs and we don't have qa team so obviously it has no bugs <laughs> But then we, but then if you're, if you're a quality assurance tester, you're like, bullshit, you'll test it yeah. and you're like, here's a bug, here's a bug, here's a bug, here's a bug. And they'll be like, you know, those bugs don't even matter. It's out there. That, people use it. 
that same sort of logic also appear appears on the uh, the gravity a, um, sp vacuum of space argument, which is okay. How, why is the atmosphere not being torn off by the vacuum of space? You're talking about a small object proportionally, you know, to the rest of space with this tiny wispy little atmosphere on it, and it's not being ripped off by the immense power of the vacuum of space. Well, it's not, and and they say, well, it's because of gravity. It's like, how can you say it's that's the only answer? Well, because if it wasn't, we'd be dead. It's like, so you're saying the fact that we're alive proves gravity. That's that's what you're saying. Well, it has to be. It's the only it's the only exclamation you you possibly have. It couldn't be that we're in a pressurized system, not that we're in some sort of enclosed building. That couldn't be it either. Well, no, it can't be because that destroys the rest of space. So the only thing we have is gravity, and I I have never seen. I, uh, gravity is going to be the bane of my existence before it's over. Everybody brings it up, for, and they use it as a cure-all. It's like a snake oil for for scientism. Do, do they know exactly how much gravity will will keep an atmosphere? No, from... no, because because they don't know what gravity is. That's the part That's that, awesome that kills thing. again. It's we. You ask any scientist, they all said the same thing, which is we can't tell you what gravity is. We can only tell you what it does because we can't replicate it. And because we can't replicate it, uh, uh, we there's nothing there's nothing to compare it to. So gravity is this magical, invisible force that pulls things to the center of of a globe, right? And people say, "Well, just do flat earthers believe in gravity?" I go, "Well, I do," but my definition is almost identical to what the globalists say. I say that gravity is this magical, invisible force that pulls things straight down to you know on the, in this structure. That's that's all it is. If you want to say it's mass, that's fine. Prove it, right? You know, we we until you develop a unified field, yeah. Gravity is what we always thought it was. It's magic. Yeah. <clears throat> um, I'm not quite there on the flight earth theory. I just know that there's just a lot of anomalies and. But do you believe? Do you believe <clears throat> in the Apollo? There's there's the start. No. Do you believe in Apollo? No. All the research, all the videos, all the images, no. I, I mean, if they, you catch them lie once and there's just once and, and there's just the logical factor is, you know, I've, I've had people eight out of me. eight first, first attempt at landing on the moon it went without a hitch, right? Seven more times, not a hitch. And then we're not there 50 more, 50 years later. Oh yeah. Yeah. And no spacesuit has ever failed. Mm -hmm. No astronaut has ever died with the exception of well we won't count gus grissom uh the challenger that was on the launch pad and another shuttle supposedly on re-entry which we know very little about because there was almost no footage on it mm -hmm. um but when it comes to apollo i've had literally had people i'm not kidding you and this goes with the logic you were just mentioning say that okay fine the moon missions are super fishy i'm not buying it but that doesn't mean the iss is fake and i say okay Here's the thing. If you're going to lie about one thing, you might as well lie. This is, I mean, this is straight, this is criminal 101, right? And that is, if you're going to shoot one guy, you might as well shoot everybody because the punishment's the same. Whether you shoot 10 people or you shoot two, you, you know, you're going to go to jail for the rest of your life. So if you're going to fake the moon missions, why wouldn't you fake everything else? Um, but to your point where, you know, again, you're not, you're not on board. That's fine. I'm not, you know, well, all kinds of children, I'm not judging. But at the same time, you're probably in, in the same place I was years ago, where I said, I mean, years ago, I didn't believe the, the moon landing was real. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't come up with a good enough reason why, which was, why do you fake the moon landing? Why? I go, is it the whole rah, rah, go team, USA's number one, that sort of thing? I go, that's good. That's a good answer, but it's not a great answer. No. When I got into flat earth, that's when it changed. Me. It's like, oh, of course. It's not that you wanted to fake the moon landing. You had to fake the moon landing. Because if you don't fake the moon landing, eventually the private sector is going to get involved. You have to militarize space. Because sooner or later, what will happen is General Dynamics or Lockheed Martin or Boeing, one of those companies is going to team up with, I don't know, Frito-Lay or Coke, right? And they're yeah. going to do a private thing to the moon because it's like, we got to get a freaking Doritos thing up there. You know, you're going you're gonna to try to do some advertising. You can't do that because those rockets are going to crash yeah. and because there's nowhere to go. Uh, it, again, people, uh, sorry, sorry. I'm ranting. Nope. I'm cutting that's, myself that's off. That's good. Um, so one of the ideas is, 
okay, if the Earth isn't globe, it's flat, or it could mm -hmm. be flat. The other idea is it's bigger than what they say it is. The it's super globe super argument. Super globe ar yeah. argument. And um, that's, there's nothing wrong with that. There's absolutely not. In fact, we've had people say that from week one, which is, isn't it possible we're just on a really flat place of a giant, giant Earth? I go, yeah, it is. Although if you do that, you're going to screw up the star trails and the constellation, something horrible, because then, you know, then they're all going to be out of whack and you're going to have to reinvent the entire heliocentric model. Um, two, you're still going to run into the atmosphere versus the vacuum argument, mm -hmm. you know, uh, which is like, well, maybe, maybe on a well, really big one, the gravity can keep it on. It's like, yeah, maybe. Well, maybe. Here, here's the thing, because... What it boils down to, if flat Earth is real, yeah, um, the idea is that there is a firmament that right. we're encapsulated. Right. So if there, if that is the case, we can prove if there, we can prove the firmament, um, or we can't disprove it. I mean, who's to say that there's we're it's just not a small seal, you know, dome sure. over a very large area of a kind of a globe? But sure. Now we're getting into the uh, what a lot of people would call the crazy part, the firmament. But this right. is stuff that's been stated in, and I'm not, I'm not religious. Um, I, I sit, call myself an agnostic, but I'm, I believe, not believe, maybe believe. It's the ideals of Jesus Christ, of what right. he did. I, I follow what he did. You know, I'm, I'm a follower of him, not necessarily the religions that came up. So I wouldn't call myself a Christian. I'd say I'm a follower of Jesus because right. of just he was the greatest ideal of what a human should do and sacrifice for others for nothing in return and not just the good humans but even the worst humans he he I mean it takes a gigantic type of person to fight for the bad people too and saying sure these people I'm protecting them too I don't care what they did you know I mean, you just can't get any better than that. So that, sure, that's no what I would uh, call myself. But still, all when I keep doing research into the Bible, the at least the um, the, the variations of the Bibles and and just ancient history, the Epic of Gilgamesh, you know, Babylonian texts, Egyptian deities, etc. They all kind of merge together in some odd way. Uh, the more that you do research into it, and all, a lot of it talks about the firmament. Right. And uh, what's funny is you talk about how people would readily believe in like David Icke's reptilians than they would with flat earth theory. Um, but yes, but they kind of tie in because if there is a firmament, if there is a dome, someone had to put it there, whether it's God, the Anunnaki, aliens, whatever. I mean, how do we how do we explain how it got there? How do we get out of it? Or maybe is it to prevent? other things from getting in uh, that that is the big argument whereas are we okay first off a structure basically destroys atheism right there i mean we're flat earth is killing atheism as we speak because anyone that gets into flat earth eventually realizes it's a default thing setting of flat earth which is well if it was built and there's a builder so you know and it's like then you're just splitting hairs it's like okay is it an advanced civilization or is it a is it you know the divine and it's like well i mean one man's advanced civilization is another man's deity uh when it comes to the bible absolutely it's a flat earth book no question uh, it's there's it's not even it's not even up for debate which is why when i started making the clues even though i never said the tower of babel in my story uh, i used the tower of babel reference which was how do you even explain the tower of babel without without it being stationary because if it is a spinning globe going in five different directions around an impossible universe, that tower is going nowhere. It's going all, you know, it's not connecting to anything. Um, what's amazing to me is watching pastor after pastor, the ones that do, you know, they're, they're scared to death because their congregation keeps asking them questions. Is the, is the Bible a flat earth book? And they keep holding on to exactly one verse in the entire book. And that's Isaiah 40, 22, which is he who sitteth upon the circle of the earth. And they say, see, it's circle, it's a globe. It's like, no, 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 circle, circle, ball, sphere, globe, 
those are different words. Circle can be a dinner plate. My dining room table. My hubcap is a circle. That roulette table is a is a is a circle. But they keep trying to use it like it's got veto power over things like I don't know Genesis. <laughs> That talks about not only does Genesis talk about the firmament, but it also talks about the Tower of Babel. Uh, not to mention, oh, I don't know, I don't want to turn this necessarily into chapter and verse, but uh, the one of the ones I was thinking about doing a clue on, and I never did, was the story of um, Joshua, where Joshua asked God to hold the sun and the moon in the sky an extra day so he could kill more people and kill more enemies. I yeah. shouldn't say same people. <laughs> yeah, he was like a serial yeah. killer. Uh, and, and God did. And he's like, so God, so you have to believe one of two things there, either God stopped the entire solar system and just completely put a hold on physics as we know it, you know, just stopped everything in its place. It's like, Oh, God could have done that. It's like, yeah, but it's a lot harder to do if it's an enclosed system. Well, you just, you just pause the sky. That's easy. Mm. That's super easy to do by comparison. And then it's like, Oh yeah, we'll just make it, you know, that's the Truman show. Yeah. Just keep the sun in the, the sky for an extra day. Oh, yeah, he's having fun. Let him go at it. Now, I've been doing a lot of research onto um, Protestants, Protestants, Protestants in the Catholic Protestants. Church. Yeah. Yeah. And um, Walter Vyth is, is what I've been kind of watching for a while. Uh, he's a Seventh-day Adventist, but he tells a great story. He started off as a uh, Catholic, then he became an atheist, then Catholic again, and didn't work, went back and went to Protestant, Protestantism. I don't know how to say that. I, in fact, last. you wouldn't use Protestant. Protestant, that's it. Being a, being a Protestant. Don't, don't try Protestant. to. I don't think okay. Protestantism, I don't think that's a word. <laughs> yeah, okay. Pretty sure. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's not too. I don't know why I tried saying it. Okay, gotcha. um, so the Catholic Church, why did they turn... Um, and because it was, it was science, it was right. scientists saying, um, science was saying it was a globe. Why the Catholic church go along with it? Yeah. Uh, a couple, couple things of thought there. One is that the Catholic church knew that science was the, the, the speed at which science was ramping up. It was a small concession to make because they didn't know for sure. Meaning, in fact, it was an argument I put forth to, to a bunch of people, which is, let's say you're the king of France in as late as, I don't know, 1500, right? Let's say you have a map of the flat earth. What are you going to do with it? You got, you got wooden ships. You got horses. You can't do anything with it. You can't even prove it. Literally until the internal combustion engine comes along, you cannot, until airplanes come along, and that's not even 100 years, you, you can't even prove that the earth is flat, Right. So the Catholic Church, it was a small concession. It was like, well, we don't know for sure. Science, it's like, we'll just let science do, you know, talk about coming back to haunt them because science then used that to build the globe. Plus, I also think that the builders of this place wanted it to happen, meaning it was a temporary people. So what are you saying that God's lying? I'm going, no, I'm not saying God's lying. I'm saying that God was putting an obstacle in front of you, a mystery, a puzzle to be solved. It was only going to be temporary. And in the grand scheme of things, it was very temporary. Uh, but that was the way to do it, which was the only way to keep people from focusing on the whole edge. Oh, we're in a box type of thing is to remove it entirely, which is all of a sudden you say, well, it's a globe. Here's the model. We're all spinning through space. You can go all over the place. You're never going to you're never leaving Earth. The truth was the fence was always, always there. They just made it invisible. It's pretty genius. And so the Catholic Church. They even when they found out, what are they going to do? Really, are they going to the Catholic Church going to like contact world media and say, just so you know, the world's flat? Oh, wow. I mean, that's that's just a giant version of the pastors that have been fighting this because no, pa I mean, I this there are pastors that have done it mm -hmm. when I'm very, very proud mm -hmm. of them, but there's other pastors they cannot do it. They're so afraid of going to their congregation and saying no different than, than YouTubers and other people have interviewed with. It's look, I'm nervous about talking about flat earth because I'm nervous about the blowback. Why are you nervous about the blowback? Because it's such a controversial topic. It's so polarizing. Catholic right. Church wouldn't have a, oh, that would be a tough, tough, the, the Pope is going to stand there on the balcony. Really? Uh, I mean, uh, this is where we get to, I guess, the last two parts. It's been over an hour, just so you know. I mean, I'd okay. love to go on if you're okay. And yeah, yeah. Bring in other people whatever. who want to come in. Uh, so first thing is, is science is the only one that's going to get us out of the globe, false globe earth theory if, if it is a false false theory um because look if the if the governments 
mass uh, mass media, if the Catholic uh, Church, the Pope, all of a sudden just said, you know what, we've lied to you all these centuries, uh, the earth is flat, people aren't still going to believe it. They're not. No, you have, to, you have to have a backing. You have to have something else. <clears throat> now, if you had landed a golden spaceship somewhere and some giant, very attractive blue people came out and said, oh, yeah, by the way, we built this place. That would go a long way, wouldn't it? Yeah. So you'd have to have something more, to use the word, you'd have to have a miracle. Yeah, you know, you're right. The Pope could not go on television and say the earth is flat today. Could not do it. Even, you know, I don't care what proof he had, he would, the, the governments would just slam on them and science would use it as their advantage to say, see, religion has completely gone off the rails, burn the churches. And um, so if the earth is indeed flat and all of this happens, the miracle happens. I mean, mm -hmm. a miracle like that hasn't happened as far as we know. How do we know? Yeah. I mean, it's just kind of like the doomsayers oh the world is going to end and this date this year this date this year right 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 and then there's also conspiracy theory about um is a project blue beam that the Lock government project blue beam that's is, also a good one is going to um unleash that aliens have arrived <laughs> and we're at war and i mean it's people would people would buy it <clears throat> if you mm -hmm. did it in enough cities and you i mean if the illusion was strong enough remember the the key here is social media and that is what there's 7 billion people in the world there's 6 billion smartphones which means not to use again the criminal thing but everybody get on the same you know get their story straight if you can broadcast the same story across all those smartphones simultaneously it goes a long way to reinforcing the truth or reinforcing your version of the truth the narrative and so yeah you put the you put a bloom beam experiment you put it over a city and have a whole bunch of people say ooh and ah and then broadcast that simultaneously pretty powerful and um and your i'm not sure if it's your your uh your playlist the clues but you i thought i saw that what happens when <laughs> Flat Earth is finally revealed the breakdown of society, or that they try to prevent it. Because if you, if people did find out, people would just kind of stop doing what they're doing. The system collapses. Well, potentially there you, it's the fork in the road, where the two things could happen. And so far, I've actually been pleasantly surprised. I mean, there's been a lot of flat earthers out there, and nobody has done anything super destructive. It seems like one of the side effects of becoming a flat Earth member is that you're so open-minded, kind of like me. I will never do anything malicious to another human being ever again in my life, even if there was a gun pointed to my head, because I know that there's something bigger than me watching. And I, again, I'm not going to be arrogant enough to say, you know, it's it's this God or this God or this God. I mean, there's five religious houses out there. Uh, I'm not going to condemn four of them. Uh, but it is... Will would it torch? Would everyone start running through the streets with pitchforks and torches? You know, no, I don't think so, um, because we've we've conditioned people with science fiction and with through movies and television that now I don't care if you're age nine to ninety, you have some sort of reference to a science fiction type scenario. It's going to freak you out, sure. Um, will you still go to work? I don't know, maybe. Are you going to burn down the libraries? I don't know. I mean, which is why I kind of talked about the religious groups, which is it's the, really the responsibility falls on the churches because all of a sudden you're giving the churches a whole bunch of leverage. And that is, you know, you say the church comes back and it's like, oh, you know, you can almost hear them cracking their knuckles, getting ready, right? <laughs> Going, okay, science. So <laughs> we're wrong about this globe thing. What about let's 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 revisit stuff like evolution and the Big Bang theory and carbon dating and dark matter and everything else, right? Oh, science would be on the ropes for a while, and so yeah, there's it, potentially there. It, it's it's kind of up in the air. I'm hoping I hope for the best. I really I really do. I, I hope that that it's a kumbaya moment where everyone comes together. But at the same time, the powers that be don't like relinquishing power. Mm -hmm. So they, it's up really in, in their it's, it's in their court, which is what do they do about it? What do, do they turn it? Yeah, because you could turn it into the apocalypse, which is what I said in that geo. 
you know, I, I said, look, you absolutely could turn into the apocalypse if you wanted to. I mean, if you wanted the because flat earth is so big, if you wanted to distract people from it, what better way than to start some new war? Thing is, who's the war going to be with now? China is our biggest trade partner. Uh, Russia, uh, it, it, whatever that posturing. Sorry, that doesn't play anymore. That that record is played out. Who's left? The entire Middle East? They're not unified. So and what's been going on talking? for decades? You know, they need yeah. someone new to. Uh, one yeah. Way. What? Yeah. What? I mean, I, is it a some new terrorist group? I I just don't see any war happening unless you come up with a new villain that we haven't heard about and they, and right now they they'd have to pull them out just out of left field and no i don't think anyone would buy it i which is kind of like sorry there's certain stories that don't get traction sort of like when they try to push uh, elon musk's tesla in space which was yeah they showed that for a few days and then they social media was like all over like hashtag fake hashtag not real hashtag are you kidding me you know but people weren't buying it so they just cut the feed and then all of a sudden we didn't hear about that car anymore and it was like, oh, yeah, I see what you're doing there. You're trying to see if you could fake space on the cheap. No one was buying it. And especially us. Oh, we tore that thing to shreds. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. I oh, no, no, no. It's, it's good. Um, I'm going to let some people in. I'm going to give them the, um, uh, the, the info to join. And hopefully no one's out there um, just wanting to troll. And oh, that's just, fine. I don't mind trolls. All right, one person is waiting. Is this Nash? I can't hear anything. Yeah, I can't hear anything yet either. Uh, anyways, we'll uh, we'll wait and we'll we'll keep talking. How how much longer can you go? I you I will, go? dude. I'm completely with you on this one. Okay, awesome. You can do whatever. Uh, um, what's so? I see a lot of um. I mean, wh what I love about what you um, what you do is um <clears throat> when it, where are like your it, monitors by the way oh um so i have one here i have one here i have one here <laughs> I, I my my entire basement is like a kind of i call it the man bat cave or batman nice. cave uh, i know i can see you looking up <laughs> like way higher i've got a big monitor and i'm looking your camera's right up here yeah. but you're looking up here yeah i've got one up there I, I need to put one here just so i could share my uh zoom um i think you have a call yeah, um, I can't hear anyone though. Um, oh, is that the it's one? It's me, that... baby. It's Mia. Hi. Hi, Mia. I don't know. Hi, baby. How are you? Well, hi, Ivan. Hi. What's up? Uh, is there anything I, that you want? I haven't talked in a long time. I just uh, look. <laughs> I haven't talked to you in a while, Mark. Nice to meet you. Nice um, to meet you. And I can't since the last time that we were on together. <laughs> My whole system has crashed. I don't know what it is with you. <laughs> I'm sorry. So, yeah. So I, I'm only talking to you on the phone. I can't watch you at the same time. It just it just won't allow me to do it. But look, um, Mark, I, I'm scratching my head, ma'am. I really am. <laughs> I um I I I worked for SpaceX. Oh boy! Yeah, right. yeah, I did on on Kwajalein Atoll, and I I climbed up 239 feet to install an antenna sure. to record. Yeah, March. Oh, and that's and that's fine. I'm not saying, by the way, I, I should probably clarify. I am not saying that everybody that works for NASA and SpaceX and the European Space Agency and JAXA and India and so on and so on. 99 percent of the people that work for these groups. They are completely legitimate, and they do exactly what they're supposed to do, which is build things and organize things and hook things up. Uh, the only people that know anything are the telemetry guys and the people that... That's who I worked for was telemetry. That's who I, I was the one that recorded 34,000 feet in the air. That was what's, me. What's at what's 34,000 feet? A, a video. The first time a video stream went that high up. That's interesting. <laughs> from from a from a from a Falcon, I should oh, okay. say. Okay. Okay. Let me just. Yeah. So yeah. So I'm really. Cons I'm just. It's just boggling my mind. And um. I know. I know. Look, I'll, I'll give you an example. I'll, I'll give you. A, I'll give you a quick example. <laughs> One of my my next door neighbor when I was out in Boulder, Colorado, was a guy named Wayne Ottinger. 
Uh, and you can look him up if you want to. Uh, he was like the NASA garage mechanic for Mercury and Gemini and Apollo. And he was, uh, his walls were just bristling with plaques and awards. And he knew all the astronauts on a first name basis. He actually de designed, was the main designer on the first draft of the LEM that they supposedly landed on the moon. Did he know anything about anything? No, he just turned a wrench. That's all he did. And he, he was so proud of working for NASA. I was like, great, that's what he should be. You know, it was, it was, uh, you know, it was a great program. However, you know, like the movie Capricorn One, you know, they did it for national pride. And we, look, th look, conspiracies happen. They're, they're in all aspects of our lives every day, in business and politics and sports and entertainment and journalism uh, and even science. Uh, mostly because, look, lab, lab geeks need Porsches too. And so I, I'm I'm glad that you worked for him. I'm I'm so you, you're not working for him currently though, right? No, 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 no. I've I'm semi-retired now. So oh. yeah, I was kind of the first woman in the field. I'm the bar, <laughs> the climber tower, climber climbing tower barber. Got it. Got it. <laughs> Again, you know, if if you're look, if you're a big believer in it, great, wonderful. I'm I'm not going to uh, twist your arm or anything. Uh, just. Let me ask you this. Do you have a master's degree in any physical science? Absolutely not. Good. Perfect. Because if you did, I'd say there's no hope for you. There's nothing I can I can do. Yeah. I, I've, I've, you know, I've always learned hands-on and stuff, so... Do you? Know. Okay, let me, let me ask you this. Do you believe in any other... And I don't want to drag this out. Uh, do you believe in any other conspiracies? And you don't have to name them, but, but have you ever followed any other conspiracies? Um, the Whether Russia shit's going on right now. <laughs> That's a conspiracy. Well, but, you know what I mean. Like, you know, no, I don't. I don't believe it though. Yeah, absolutely. I've always questioned. I'm an atheist. I'm an anti-theist, actually. So, you know, I I believe we're one race in the human race, and and you know, global warming is oh, yeah, really important right now. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And. And, and global warming is also, people ask me that all the time. They say, do you believe in, uh, in global warming as a flat earther? And I go, yeah, yeah. In fact, it, in fact, it works way better for us because remember the whole term greenhouse gases. Well, it works a whole lot better if it's an actual greenhouse, not just, uh, not, not just a globe where the gases can escape at all times. Uh, and, and I thought it was oh very, very interesting that they changed the term and they were really good about that, changing the term from global warming to climate change. And now we're finally going back to global warming because apparently there's a whole bunch of scientists freaking out. And they're not really telling the public why. And I think they know. Well, if it was a flat earth, would it be called flatter warming? I'm just kidding. No, <laughs> I see what you did there. no, but but it would be seriously I, the whole the whole point of a greenhouse is is this giant square structure that's enclosed, and that's how the greenhouse works. Well, it traps everything inside it, and and gas. So Mark, are we like you don't believe in like the, the different planets and stuff? Lights in the sky. If you go to a planetarium and you sound like you, I mean, you sound young. I mean, I imagine you're all of probably thirty nine. But I love you. I'm 50. <laughs> oh, well, yeah. that's all right. I'm going, I'm still going to envision 39. And like, if you go, <laughs> you go to a planetarium, and, and again, you, you, if you're old enough to remember planetariums, where if you looked up at the sky, right, I mean, you could see Mars and Venus and the moon go across and everything. And you'd say, well, yeah, but we're in a building. Those are just lights on the ceiling. And I'd say, well, if you walk out of that building, who's to say you're not in a just a much bigger building, like the Truman Show? I remember the Truman Show. Mark, how old are you? How old I, are you? I am probably older than I sound. I I just I am fifty now. So you're right, sixty eight, right? Yeah, so, sixty eight. Right. <laughs> um, interesting. I just. <laughs> I, I, you know, I heard about flat earthers, and then when I saw, I mean, I haven't been able to get a hold of Ebon in a long time. So, well, again, get, give it some thought. You know, if, if you're if you're really new to it, I recommend the um, the documentary, which just became public uh, about a month ago, called "Behind the Curve," which was uh, it's basically a cross section of flat earthers that we uh, of everything we did last year up until the conference. 
it seems to do pretty well as far if it's your first exposure to it that's what i'd look at first what i like about the flat earthers uh sorry to cut you off mia is they do their own experiments and they'll repeat those experiments different locations different types of experiments uh right. like for you know they use cars they use boats, they use um, telescopes, lasers, yeah, lasers. Telescopes, P, you know, what, whatever latest technology there is. And all science right. is, is um, take it, take this theory and until there's technology or advancement in, in whatever, in mathematics or physics, whatever, until something better comes up, that's kind of what we have. Right. And that's, that's always been the case with science. And my problem is, is it seems like every institution of control lies and that uh, we everything's just kind of been upside down. Science is the people that we what we revere in science is is the scientific experiments. But instead, we're just listening to these science scientists who have credentials, but they don't show us any of the experiments and repeatable uh like some people may repeat it and they get different results and it's like i don't yeah. get it i mean po look power corrupts always has science is not immune to it it's still men i'm gonna i'm gonna give women a pass just so you know uh because because men are so easily corrupted and if you think i'm kidding people say oh you know science is above reproach it's like really Really, um, l let me rattle off just, just a small handful of the times that science took the money to cut the corners to r take a product to market before it should have been. Oh, um, absolutely. It's corruptible. I, I mean, and, and the major of it is now is it's, it's, against, it's using against warring each other. And I mean, it's right. defensive and, and, and it's not used for the betterment. Right. But I, I did take offense. I mean, you said, right, I did catch just a, like a little peep of it. By the way, Periscope doesn't work well. I don't know what's going on with that. So, okay. um, yeah, for Evan. But um, you don't think that, that Elon Musk put that Tesla up in, into the atmosphere like that? Oh, no, 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 no. You don't believe no, that? No, you don't no. believe hey, that? Nope, nope, not for a second. And here's, here's a couple reasons why. Um, the first is is that it was not even remotely prepped for space. He said it wasn't. It was just a car that was taken out of his garage and supposedly put in a capsule and shot up there. There are so many things that would have happened to that car within the first couple hours, and none of them happened. Um, one, the pressure in those tires, uh, they would have gone as tight as a snare drum and burst. Uh, all, the, all the liquid systems would have frozen immediately and shattered everything inside that engine, including, remember, it was a battery-powered car. So all the battery fluid would have frozen. Um, the windows, the side windows, uh, would under the stress of heating and cooling would have shattered. You know, the safety glass, the the, the front windshield would have been a mess. Um, all the plastics would have warped. Have you contacted him about this? Have you have you got in touch with him about this? We 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 did try. Yes, he hates us, and and he should. Oh, but geez. you got to remember that Elon <laughs> Musk. Look, look, Elon Musk is is one of those guys that should never be allowed in front of a microphone he should never be allowed to talk to media he makes the claims that he makes in fact you look this up if you get a chance um there the new york post did a story this year they finally caught on because we were just railing on him and new york post ran a, a story that said elon musk is a total fraud means that meaning that every promise that he ever made about anything remember he was supposed to send two tourists around the moon this year uh, he's supposed to make a, a light rail system from Los Angeles to San Francisco. He was going to solve Puerto Rico's power problems with his solar panels. Um, a high. Uh, I mean, a, I do believe he's trying to do a lot of shit that a lot of people aren't doing. He just, you know what I'm saying? And he's done. He's done more than most, though. Well, I mean, and that's what I'm saying. I've met the guy. I, I, I'm, um, I need to remember where I, he where he made his money. A lot of people remember in the annals of history. God. Hey, pal. In the annals of history, if you go to like people on the street right now and you say, who invented Tesla? Well, okay, first off, a lot of people are going to say Tesla. It's like, no, 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 he's dead. Uh, but, but a lot of people are going to say Elon Musk. It's like, no, Elon Musk did not invent Tesla. He bought it. He made his money in PayPal. He was a software developer. Right. That's what he did. Right. And, he made a, and he had like an 11% stock share when the sucker went IPO. And he made a ton and of money. That's why he did SpaceX. And that's why well, he did SpaceX. And he did his solar panel thing, which was subsidized by the government. But the point was, is he just bought? Well, yes, he started SpaceX, but he bought Tesla. 
And the, oh, sorry, there was too many. Okay, you want here's a small thing. Then you're saying, oh, it's petty. No, this isn't petty. Think of this: when you take a look at that Tesla footage again, do you know what you what was abs completely absent during the entire foot? You know, the hours that they were showing that thing, there wasn't a single logo anywhere. It's like, okay, he owns a private company and a public company, and you'd think it's SpaceX, right? You'd think he'd have that sucker. It should look like NASCAR. That thing which should be wall-to-wall -wall stickers with big Tesla on the front, this, uh, SpaceX on the side, that the mannequin should have SpaceX and all this other stuff. Nope, none of that. There wasn't a single logo to be found. Not only that, why wasn't he – I mean, he could have – that thing could have paid for itself in endorsements. Instantly could have paid. In fact, why wasn't he using – the um the 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 flagship car the the s model why was he using the stupid roadster the the s model is a four seater wouldn't have weighed anymore and, and he could have put four mannequins in there all could have been sponsored by disney the thing would have paid for itself now sorry there's no way and, and look seriously look up the social media on this nobody was buying it it was just too perfect too freaking perfect the, the, the all the, the three cameras worked perfectly and by the way where was and sorry my last point on this which was where was the falcon heavy you saw those two boosters land at kennedy which makes no sense there's complete conflict of interest there nasa should have never helped them because they would have taken away from their budget but where was the falcon heavy rocket when it delivered the car it was the greatest misdirection i've ever seen which was they showed booster booster and then straight to car and and i missed it too and then later i'm going wait a minute where's the falcon heavy that delivered it you should have seen that thing tumbling in the background Never saw a single frame because it wasn't there. Wasn't there. Sorry, my, my take. Sorry, I'm sorry you worked for well, space. No, no, no. I just, I look, I, you know, I just know the, the mission that I did in, in 2007, the Falcon. Look, we recorded it. You know, I, I watched it. I, oh, you yeah, know, yo, you can it, see there I, was an anomaly. I'm, I mean, I mean, I'm it sure. just. I'm sure it so was you can you can see Earth, you can see the Earth. I mean, it goes high enough to where you can see the whole Earth. So I don't know. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Just, are we talking about I Tesla? Do or are we not talking understand about SpaceX. You, no, I know, I know. Are we it's when you March said when they got high enough? Seven on Quadrant Atoll. When sorry, yeah. When when they when they, when you saw the picture of the you whole Earth, are we talking about the everything. Tesla thing or your or your thing? My thing, right. Do you remember what it was That's called? That's what I'm saying. So it's just, just look up on YouTube, Falcon March 2007. Okay. I'll look it up. Yeah. I it's will. on there. Yeah. And it was on there like two minutes after we did it. Cool. I know. And that was, you know, 2007. So, that, I mean, that was pretty quick, I thought. That but, is pretty quick. You know, I, I don't know, Mark. I'm trying to, trying to be open-minded, Evan. <laughs> uh, it's fine. I mean, um... I think it's just a progression, really. It, it's who you believe, um, whether it's government, whether it's media, whether it's some religious uh, society or um, NASA's. You know, once you start saying the lies that they do, it's like, well, if they're lying about this and they keep wanting to tell people that this this is what it is. You're, you're gonna just be like well i can't believe them so what else is there does that mean the opposite's true so then you have to look at the opposite and what are they doing are they doing the same thing or are they doing something different more honest more truthfully and i see it as more honest and truthfully that the flat earthers do i i will say this if this helps you if you would have asked me four years ago in fact not even four years ago uh you know, what i thought about flat earth i would have laughed you out of the room Oh, yeah. That's what everybody that goes into this starts in the hole, which is you're an idiot. There's no way it could be true. I mean, I'm sitting there nine months in because I didn't have a lot of material to work off of. I'm literally banging my head on the keyboard going, it can't be true. It can't be true. There's no way it can be true. And then finally, you know, I woke up in the middle of the night. I said, you know what? I can't prove the globe anymore. For whatever reason, I can't do it. There's more, you know, that scale tips. Where it's like, okay, there's not enough evidence for to hold me in the globe paradigm. I'm gonna go the other way, and then again, that's why I put it out to the internet and put out put out the videos and said, okay, and I I was really open about it. I said, okay, here's my my name, my phone number, my address. I don't think it's a globe anymore. Tell me how, where I went wrong, and was really hoping that somebody 
in the academic world would come back and just stomp on me and say, okay, here's why, smart guy, and, and just shoot me down. And they didn't. In fact, everybody else started calling me up. And then once I had the subject matter experts call me up, it's like, okay, you know, and, and here we are, conferences. There's a flat earth subject matter, SME? Subject matter experts, yeah. Yeah, I've got a big list of people uh, that came on. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, let me, uh, let me, if you don't mind me, r rattle off a couple of them real quick, um, just their titles. Uh, United States Navy Missile Instructor, an Air Force Navigator, a Marine Corps Sniper Instructor, a Navy Submarine Chief, Army Artillery Radar Operator, Australian Intelligence Officer, American Flight Instructor, Industrial Engineer, Career Surveyor, International sh Shipping Expert, Army Master Gunner, uh, Surveyor, um, Airline Captain, Airline Co-Pilot, Merchant Marine, blah, 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 just goes on and on. And all of them either made statements or came on publicly and nobody recanted their testimony and nobody came out against them. That was the part that stunned me. I was hoping that somebody from the one branch of the military would say, oh yeah, that Navy missile guy that you had, yeah, here's where it went wrong. Nobody did. So, I mean, now I got a few armchair quarterbacks here and there, but it's been a weird right. ride so far. So the Mars mission we just did and landed on Mars, you don't believe any of that? Who, who told you we landed on Mars again? United States military? Those guys? Yeah. Uh, they'd be the same guys that well, said it went to the moon. So, yeah, I'd have a little problem with that. You don't believe we went to the moon? Oh, did you not? Where have you been during the first part of this broadcast? I, I haven't watched it. I'm sorry. Like I said, oh, I couldn't watch it. it was, oh, I, yeah. I, no, I, no, no, no. Okay, you time. know what? I'm going to repeat okay, the line. Okay, I'm sorry. I'll, no, no, it's okay. It's okay. You're fine. Uh, I'll repeat the line that I said in the beginning. It's like, no. Buzz Aldrin? You don't believe Buzz Aldrin? Buzz really? Aldrin, Buzz Aldrin <laughs> and, uh, well, heck, let's forget about Buzz Aldrin. Neil and Neil Armstrong. Armstrong. Yeah. Those guys, let's let's go with the guys that are still around, you know, hanging around. Uh, uh, I know Buzz. Buzz Aldrin's here. Yeah, yeah, what are you I talking know, about? I he's, know, but he's, he's, he's sort of still there, right? You know, he could die tomorrow. And <laughs> he's got no, a young guy, girlfriend. Or nobody assistant. would be surprised if Buzz keeled over tomorrow. Nobody, nobody would be surprised. Uh, I'm talking about like Scott Kelly or Chris Hatfield or Terry Verts or Tim Peake or those guys, right? They're all colonels, full bird colonels in the United States military. Most people don't know that. If you're actually pretending to be an astronaut, you're way up there in the food chain. So it's not like they're bringing in lieutenants up up that thing so no uh i'm sorry nasa is department of defense all the way yeah they wear white uniforms they smile for the camera they don't carry guns but they are uniquely military uh 95 98 percent of anyone that's ever said they've been to space has been part of the military program so no i'm sorry I mean, look, come on Okay, it, it, how, why should this surprise anybody? Are you saying the governments don't lie? Categorically, we don't even have spy planes. We don't even have a spy program. Area 51 still doesn't exist, even though we've taken movies of it. We, they're still saying, nope, nothing there. It's like, what are you talking about? You fly your employees in from Vegas every single day. So, no, no, Apollo was, Apollo didn't happen, not the way they said it was. Uh, if you have any doubt of that, watch the wonderful independent movie, Capricorn 1 from the late 1970s, I'm a huge fan of that, uh, where they faked the Mars mission, and for good reason, mind you, and in that movie, they still claim that they actually went to the moon, but they only faked Mars. So no, I, I don't think for a second that, I, every everything in NASA was faked. Every single thing, literally everything. And they did it for good reasons. Look, they did it for God and country, they did it because they thought it was for our own good. Yeah. I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna say that they're horrible, evil people, because at the time, they probably thought, you know what, the people, the, the public isn't ready for this. There, Are you a religious there, person? There, uh, yes. before, before we get to that part, uh, I Sorry. just want to say that there's one guy, I just watched this interview. He's saying uh, the moon landing is the only good conspiracy. You know, 9-11, Sandy Hook, all this other stuff where people died, people died. But moon landing, it was a good conspiracy. It well, was, it wasn't, again... There's an old saying, I'll get to your religious question in one second. The, the, there's a saying from one of our old presidents, uh, older presidents, uh, FDR, Franklin, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, where it was very, very true. And he says, only give the public as much truth as they can handle. And that's the same with anybody, uh, which is like, it's like one, it's like, never, never, never tell anyone how bad it is, if you can help it. Uh, you, know, you know, unless you're a doctor. And even then, 
be real careful about it. As far as being religious, yes. Uh, but, but that being said, I fell away from religion for a number of years, like decades. Uh, I was raised in a strong born again, Christian household where, um, uh, church wasn't just a Sunday thing, youth group and vacation Bible school and camp Malibu and all that stuff. And, but I was raised on a rural Island. And when I left, I realized how sheltered I was. I got to university and said, Holy smokes, there's more than one religion. Seriously. And there's people who like, don't, don't believe in religion. Oh, wow. This is really amazing. And then I got into tech and I completely fell away from it. Because if you're in tech, you know, you're really into science. But when I got into flat earth, I turned right back around and said, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, you know, because again, it's the default setting, which is if it was built, it was built by someone bigger than you. And fine, if you want to so say. So you don't, are you a creationist then? Are you a creationist or an evolutioner? Do you believe in evolution? Uh, kind of a hybrid there where I believe, I believe it was created, but I believe that any evolutionary changes along with terraforming were done between civilizations because I also don't think that we were the first people to rent this apartment by any stretch. This is not a one-off. Uh, and we know this. A anybody in science knows this. That, that, look, there's remnants. And of that's why, so the dinosaurs were killed off by a meteor? Uh, killed off by the system. The system had to kill them off eventually. I think we started out big, oh. which was, I think the dinosaurs at the time, we consider them big because they were big compared to us. But I don't think they were very big. Kind of like how we make electronics smaller and smaller and smaller. I think this world we were making things smaller and smaller and smaller, uh, sort of like. But I'm the, saying they did get, you know, evacuated, you know, killed off. Were they wiped out? Yeah. Millions right, of years yes. ago. Yep. They were wiped out millions and millions of no, years no, ago. No, no, doesn't doesn't okay. have to doesn't have to be millions of years ago though, and that is I think the carbon. Oh, I, so I'm kind of a mix where I believe in dinosaurs, but I believe that the carbon dating system is just just loads of rubbish. And that there, you know, is it was it 300 million years ago that the dinosaurs? No, I doubt it. Uh, because, be but between terraforms, I mean, yeah, it could be thousands of years, but not, it doesn't have to be hundreds of millions of years. I think that's excessive. Uh, one thing that I was saying last night, uh, Samia, so um, theory of evolution, I, I question it too, is um, hundreds of millions of years that the dinosaurs have been around and they became extinct or they became birds. So in if humans lived a couple hundred million years to evolve, would we become just smaller, really feathery bird-like beings? Is that our evolutionary process? And then two, no. uh, the animals that lived during the, um, the uh, age of the dinosaurs, the uh, crocodile and the sharks, they right. didn't change. Right. And so they're they're like the perfect uh, evolutionary the structure. Perfect evolutionary, yeah. The yeah. shark has never evolved. Uh, and again, and also remember the ones that seem to. And I know there's some people that say, "Well, no, there's land dinosaurs around." It's like whatever. Most of the the dinosaurs that we say are still kind of hanging around are water based. A uh, perfect example would be here. Here, he'll destroy your uh, hundreds of millions of years. The freaking coelacamp. Remember that fish, that creepy looking fish with the giant teeth? Mm -hmm. And supposedly, you know, we've got fossils of that thing. It's like, oh, that thing died off a hundred and something million years ago. And then all of a sudden they land one out in the Atlantic Ocean or Pacific Pacific Ocean not too long ago. Um, or the, the uh, and th I mean, that's that's true. I mean, that's, that's, that's absolutely fact. Um, or the, the plesiosaur, the, the Japanese fishing trawler carcass landed in um, uh, when they were trolling off of Japan. Uh, out in the Pacific. And they, of course, being Japanese, they didn't know what they had. And, and they were like, it's, well, they were all business. It's like, oh, we're not going to put that in our hold. Let's just take a picture of it and throw it back. It's like, are you insane? What, what the heck did you do that for? But even if it had melted out of the ice, right? Even if it melted out, the, out of the ice, we're only talking 100,000 years. Even if it did. Well, my thing, my point is, 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 uh, so are you saying that the Earth is only like the 6,000 years? Like, because you got to remember. No, no, no. 6,000 yeah. for our civilization, I think it's thousands of years. Yes. But do I think the earth is only 6,000 years old? No, because, because remember, I think that uh, we're not the first people to, to, to use this place. So there are multiple. Right. If our civilization. Dinosaurs. Back, go ahead. Dinosaurs weren't on the ark. 
No, no. Right? No, no, no. Okay. But do I, but do I think okay. that's part of a previous sure. conversation? One thing we got in common. Okay, so, Evan, you talked about Kent Hovind. Kent Hovind? Yes. Kent Hovind. Do you know where he's at these days? He hates us. He absolutely hates us. Kent Hovind. Well, because his, dot- his dinosaurs were on the ark. Yeah. Oh, you, well, yeah, yeah, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. He he came out when he his, got out of his, prison for embezzlement. He, listen, he's like a that's what I'm saying. He's down here in Alabama, about an hour and a half from me, yeah. with the new uh, dinosaur adventure land. Oh wow! Now do and, I? Th- you know, do, Pens- he came up from yeah. Pensacola, tax evasion. Went to prison for tax evasion, Ebon. Mm-hmm. Right. That's who you were listening to yesterday. That was about twenty years ago. Well, not that. Well, I mean, he got out in twenty end of twenty fifteen. He showed a video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I showed a lot I of videos. About, I was like, "Why does that name sound so familiar? I don't, I don't recognize him. I don't well, that's why because he's an old, he's old now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, older. But you should see what Alabama is allowing him to do, just like they did up in Kentucky with Ken Ham, with the Creation Museum, and those are it's five hundred one C threes, baby. Yeah, I mean, it, I pay my taxes to God, <laughs> and that's good for our fellow humans. That's <laughs> people. On. Like, any any type of like people are good or bad. Organizations are good or bad. Whatever it is, countries good or bad. Um, people have their own thing, and um, you know you can't blame entire people who follow one thing uh, just because of what one person does, and just because one person does something bad. Some of the things they say doesn't mean everything that they said was false or a lie. So you just got to have to listen to people and whether whatever they say has merit. Or no, you wanna look I got to see bit the more. I gotta see the proof. I want to see proof. Well, yeah, that's what we're here for. We're here to. The, but the only way you right. can have proof is to be able to test it and retest it and get the exact same results that the person who stipulated the test got. Right. That's science. That's the scientific Right, so, evidence-based facts. Mm-hmm. And so, what what Mark does, and what a lot of flat earthers do, is put the scrutinize the flat uh, the globe Earth theory, and try to disprove it because they're not going to prove flat Earth. They're going to be just put put into question the globe Earth theory and uh, with with test testable experiments, and that's why. I've I've been looking into it and I'm kind of on that rope. And one of the first things I said to my wife, um, I said, and I opened it up with, you know, I I I, I think I uh, I trust the uh, flat Earth theory a lot more than the globe Earth theory. First thing she says is, "Oh my God!" <laughs> and then I followed up with a couple <laughs> of points, and she's like, "Well, if you would open it up with that, I would have just it wouldn't have been so bad." I mean, she's right. she's got a good head on her shoulders. Um, but oh, yeah, and again, if she would have reacted any other way, I would have been worried because and I tell people, I go, look, if you don't laugh at flat earth the first time you hear it, there's probably something wrong with you because it is there's I have I have it's an amazing, by the way, a topic that people always have an opinion on it. I have never and I mean, out of all the people I've talked to, I've never run into a single person that I've said where has come to me and said, oh, flat earth, never heard of it. Everybody knows it. Everybody knows it, which is why I'm. I'm good. I don't know enough about it. I just yeah, but you know, know the term. That it's, it's bizarre. It's it's just bizarre. I, I mean, it's just like I guess you know when I tell people I'm an atheist in Alabama, they look like I am an alien. Okay, well, <laughs> you, an atheist well, you in can't Alabama. live in Alabama. <laughs> that is a stretch. <laughs> right, it is. Yeah. Trust me, and it's it's not easy. But um, you know. I, I just I've been around the world. <laughs> I've been completely uh, around there. around the world. Uh, I don't know how you get from I'm gonna have that's what I'm saying. I've not looked into it enough to you go have to okay, look into well, it. Well look into if you don't want to watch I, the documentary, look at um uh the thing I put on YouTube called uh Flat Earth Clues. It's a playlist. It's, uh, it's pretty good. Yeah, it's, flat, a, it's a playlist. Just flat. Yeah, I'll flat check Earth it out. Clues. I won't I won't yeah, I'm not going to dish you for doing that. I mean, I just I'll check into it, but I don't know enough about it to, you know. Okay. I'm just got my eyebrows up right now. I'm like, okay. 
But that's you, fine. You get the I first can. part right, though. Question everything. I yep, think that's kind everything. of most Absolutely. Important. Absolutely. No doubt about it. But I just, you know, with as much that's going on right now, I mean, is, is that going to help with any any of the problems that are happening right now? Ah, good one. No, no, it's good. It's the fact that you're already to that stage already means I will probably have you here in a couple of weeks. So what, because one out of 10, every 10 people ask me, it's like, okay, fine. Let's say you're living in some sort of Truman show, right? How does this affect me, right? How does it change the price of beer? My wife still hates me. My kids don't listen to me. I have to go to my crappy job tomorrow morning. Does any of this change? It's like, well, it doesn't until you start believing it. Once you start believing it, everything looks different you'll treat everything differently. All of a sudden, you'll walk outside and you'll look up at the moon, you'll look up at the stars, you'll look at people differently because of it. Uh, you will. I, I, it, seriously, it, like I, I, was, I was telling Eben, I'm sorry, is it Ebon or Eben? Ebon. It, yeah, Eben. that's fine. I know it's me. <laughs> no, that's okay. The, um, what I, I was saying that, look, I will never, because of Flat Earth, I'll never do anything malicious to anyone ever again. Uh, how, how could I? Uh, not if I know for sure that uh, somebody's looking over my shoulder. Well, I shouldn't say for sure, but it's a high probability. Kind of like trying to run a, uh, a traffic stop that's got a camera on it. You're really going to run it if there's a camera on it? Probably not. Even if you even if you heard a rumor the camera isn't working. So, I don't know where I was going with that. So, it's, <laughs> no, that is, is, it, is it part of, do you have a church? And they, that's part of the oh, religion? Oh, yeah, there's it's red like, robes and hoods, and uh, I own, like, three Rolls Royces, and we chant a lot. Um, no, there's none of those things. No, we don't even have a, a board of directors. It's just, it's really, Flat Earth is kind of, the community is based off of merit, which is you think of something, you you run a test, or if you have an idea, you make some, some videos on it, or put it out in social media and see if it gets traction. Plain and simple. And then if it does... Uh, you kind of work your way up in the ranks and, and you know, you get to talk to more people. And uh, But it's not as organized as you might think. It's definitely not like organized crime, which still isn't really that organized, but whatever. Yeah, I'm totally like blank slate here because I, I don't know anything <laughs> about you guys. So I didn't even know it was like a real group or whatever. No, so no, I, yeah, team. I've just heard the we term, have, have, so I don't, I don't. We have meetups in, in just about every city and state you can think of and country. Uh, we've had conferences all over the place. Hell, the, hell, the, the documentary, um, which was the first one of its kind, uh, did amazingly well. We did 21 film festivals in seven countries. We were in Moscow a couple of weeks ago. It was stunning. I wasn't there personally. I would have loved to have gone. But. So, um, okay, Flat Earth around the globe, outside the country, outside the U.S., how prominent yes. is it compared to the U.S. of people? Who Very big. Um, U.K. is – well, all the English-speaking countries, of course, are really big. Uh, but we're big in, in the Pacific Rim for whatever reason. Uh, we're big in Russia. I don't know why. Um, we're – we've got people everywhere. Uh, I mean, there's been conferences in Australia, Afghanistan, Canada, U.S., South Korea, um, U.K., um, I can't remember. There's, they're all over the place. The problem is, is that we don't have translators. Is that so? Like, if you if you want to have some fun, uh, type in flat Earth and convert it to another language, and then put that put those words in, and and then fire off them off into Google. Uh, there's tons of people all over the place in, in just about every country you can think of, and I don't know. I've never talked to them because there there's no English whatever language crossover. So yeah, it's it's monstrous at this point. And, wow. and you know, you want to know the big reason, the big reason why it's resonating. Um, and we should probably wrap up some, sometime after this. Sure. The big reason it's resonating is because for something very, very simple, which is flat earth is easier to explain now than the globe model. Meaning the globe model is not that easy. I mean, yeah, the, fine. The, the globe is a sphere, right? But outside of that, you need geometry and trigonometry and calculus and quantum physics and quantum mechanics and all the other stuff, right, to get to the universe. Whereas the flat earth is really, really easy to explain. Uh, and we've got most of the bases covered. And you're thinking, okay, what's that mean? What that means is, um, I'll use that line from the I Ching, one of the only things I remembered from that book. No, not the I Ching, sorry, the art of war. Whew. 
uh, Art of War uh, by Sun Tzu, where he said that people are like water. They always take the path of least resistance. It's kind of a nice way of saying people are lazy, right? People will always take the easiest route. If you think I'm kidding, uh, try to find people that don't text. We all used to be on the phone. Now everybody You're talking talks. to one. There You're you talking go. to one. Yeah. Yep. There you go. <laughs> and, and because of that, people will choose the easiest explanation in, in, in something like this. And, and where is Occam's you know, Razor as well? Sorry. Yeah, there you go. The, well, yeah, kind of like Occam's Razor, Razor. Whereas, look, the globe is really hard to explain the details of it. Flat Earth is, is the nuances of it now are really easy to explain. Kind of like what they used to be back in the day when we used to think it was flat Earth, right? When when all those cultures used to. And then when science made it harder, it's like, okay, we'll leave science to the scientists. Well, now with social media, we've now come up with these pretty easy you know, a, the flat earth for dummies, you know, type things. We put it out there and it's resonating. And so people and science doesn't know how to defend against it. So they don't. And it's like, okay, fine. We'll win by attrition. <laughs> we'll just, we'll just, just keep piling them up. What are you going to do? You can't, you can't figure out, they can't figure out a way to make the globe any easier than it is. So they're not. And so we're just, our numbers just keep growing and growing and growing. I'm like, okay. And I knew this, sorry, let me end on this part which is, here's how I knew this, and you missed this, uh, caller, which was, remember how we were talking about the, the curvature of the earth, right? The, the formula, right? It's not our formula, it's theirs. When I could, I could ask anyone on the street this, if you say, okay, the curvature of the earth is eight inches per mile, right? And they're going, they're to they're, oh, I'm totally with you. Got it, eight inches per mile, I'm totally there. That's easy, right? And I go, really? Squared. The second I see squared, their eyes just glaze over. And seriously, that's like everything they forgot about high school algebra. It just comes back to haunt them. It's like, I never studied for that test. And it's like, dude, it's really easy. It's eight inches per mile squared. Now, in all fairness, I had to relearn it myself. But the point is, is if they don't know that, what do you think geometry and trig and calculus are going to do? And they're, they're not even, it's, you might as well be talking Latin to them. And that's why it's, it's doing it. Because we now have a way of explaining a world to them that involves almost no mathematics at all. People hate math. <laughs> they do. And so it's like, here, here we are. You know, sub counts just keep going up and up and up and millions of hits. So there you go. Well, good for you, Mark. I guess. I mean, I don't, you know, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I don't know if this is a business model or what you pointed. I mean, I don't, I don't understand. I gotta look. I don't know. I gotta look into it because, like I said, I I am clueless with it. Do so. do look in and keep an open mind. Uh, you know, and if you want to shut us down, great, fantastic. Um, but uh, to date, everybody it's been running along like a pretty smooth machine for a while. All right. Anyway, Good what for else? You, Lou. Hang in there. Um, <laughs> any. I guess final plug. I mean, not that many. I'm pretty sure people will watch my show just to, just because you're on it. So there's not much to say. Uh, final um, plug is look. I'll say what I always say to people, which is don't take my word for it. Everything I've just said to you, take with a grain of salt. Uh, look, I'm just some guy on the internet that came up with a, a theory, and it, it seems to be resonating pretty well. But look, do your own research and ask questions. Uh, you know, do figure it out for yourself. I, it, that's my challenge to anybody. Go out there and see if you can prove the globe like you thought you could prove it. Uh, I'll use this one line. Uh, I'll end it with this. Uh, there was a one line by uh, um, uh, George Orwell, you know, the guy that wrote 1984. And he wrote this in 1946. He, and he wasn't a flat earther, but he said, he said, you know, if you go out to the street and ask anyone how they know the world's a globe, their first response is always the same. Well, we just know. It's a given. We know. And then if you press them on it, you say, yeah, but how do you know? That's when they start getting irritated. And I thought that was very telling because remember, in 1946, we, we had nothing. NASA wasn't even founded until 1958. So how did everybody in the world know it was a globe in 1946? And, you know, it's like, how do you prove the globe without NASA now? And you can say, fine, sticks and shadows or, you know, some sort of geometry. It's like, yeah, but nobody knew any of that crap. They just believed what it was, was told to them. So, anyway, that's my, my thing. So Google Flat Earth Clues. It's on the banner behind me.
So that's not green screen, by the way. <laughs> yeah. All actually, right. I can hit that. Thank you very much for coming on, Mark Sargent. And um, I'll probably end up being fully in that camp sometime soon, I'm pretty sure. Uh, um, let me let me know, and I will I will mirror this whenever you decide to put it up. If it goes up tonight, okay. I'll, I'll grab it and mirror it. I'll send you I'll send you the, the physical copy as well. So you, cool. you can go and edit it uh, if you want to. All right. Uh, well, all right. Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure. Thank you for coming on. Uh, right. Thank you, Mia, as well. And Bye, Mia. Else. Yes. Yeah, take care, guys. All right. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye, guys.